Hello, my name is Chris Considine. I was a lawyer for Sue Rodriguez for her fight all the way to the Supreme Court of Canada. I'm sorry that I can't be with you in person today, but I'm very pleased to be able to share with you a few of my thoughts and memories about a remarkable person, and that was Sue Rodriguez. Very recently, the Supreme Court of Canada, in the Carter decision, allowed Canadians to be able to have the option that Sue Rodriguez fought so hard for over 20 years ago. I was absolutely delighted at the result, and I'm sure that Sue Rodriguez would have been as well. Let me tell you a little bit about Sue Rodriguez. She was a woman in her early 40s who approximately 22 years ago came into my office. She explained to me that she had ALS, which is a motor wasting disease. It means that as the course of the disease takes place, a person's limbs become dislocated, the ability to swallow, talk, and eat become significantly compromised. For somebody like Sue Rodriguez, she did not want to go through that end process, not only for herself, because she felt that her loss of dignity would be too much for her, but secondly, for her young eight-year-old son. When Sue talked to me, she wanted to be able to have an option of somebody helping her end her life when the pain, both mentally and physically, became intolerable for her. As a result of looking at all the medical literature and considering the Charter of Rights in Canada, Sue and I decided to mount a challenge to the sections of the criminal code which prevented somebody from helping her in her extreme state of ALS from dying when she wanted to, when she wanted to have her choice. Consequently, we went from, both, from the Supreme Court of British Columbia through the Court of Appeal all the way to the Supreme Court of Canada. And by a very narrow vote, we lost on a 5-4 split. That was a very tragic and difficult moment for Sue because she said, one person's vote determines how I die in this country. And she felt it was very wrong. But what Sue accomplished is that she opened the door to all Canadians to have the debate about end-of-life issues. We really hadn't talked about end of life before, but now, as a result of her actions, we started to. At the time of the Supreme Court of Canada decision 20 years ago, Sue and I knew that the court would have to revisit it again. And I knew that with the benefit of experience, as other jurisdictions started to look at the issue, and as Canadians aged, that the Supreme Court of Canada would likely one day hear the issue and ultimately find in favor of what Sue Rodriguez stood for and that in fact took place. And that's why I was overjoyed on behalf of Sue and Miss Carter and Miss Taylor and all those other Canadians who have been through or who will go through these end-of-life issues and the loss of dignity to allow them to be able to have this particular option. One of the most moving moments for me was Sue Rodriguez, aside from the very personal time that we spent talking about the difficulties that she was experiencing with her disease, was shortly after a press conference at the Bedford Hotel on Government Street in Victoria. As Sue came out in her wheelchair with Sven Robinson and myself, it was as if the whole of Canada had stopped, because on that street, all the cars stopped, the pedestrians stopped, and they spontaneously started to clap. So the applause echoed amongst the buildings. It was one of the most moving and memorable moments of my life, because it showed the respect that Canadians had for Sue Rodriguez as an individual to take on such a personal, and very important aspect of her life and to challenge the law which prevented her from having the option that she sought. The Supreme Court of Canada decision 
was a very wise one because it's given an opportunity to all Canadians to participate in the debate over the next year as to how its decision should be implemented. There are a lot of complexities that are going to have to be addressed in terms of irremedial illness, consent, and actual protocols that should be implemented to protect people who are in the final stages of their lives as well as protect those around them. So I'm hoping that all of us as Canadians will be able to engage in the debate and offer our ideas to the politicians and the healthcare providers as to what is appropriate. There will be different ideas, but as Canadians, we will listen to each other, I'm sure, and be able to ultimately come up with some resolutions that will help those who are in those final stages of life. Thank you.